Hey everyone, I'm Scott Davenport. Welcome to In The Field. Thanks for joining me today. So as this video posts, I've just finished a San Diego Coastlines workshop and I'm recording this before the workshop, but I'm gonna predict the workshop was awesome because generally it is. Everyone always has a good time. It's great when we get a bunch of photographers together and we learn from one another. We have great experiences. We make great photos. Uh, it, it's always a good time. If you'd like to join me on a workshop in 2018, dates are posted for like winter and spring on my, on my website. And so head on over there, grab a seat. It'd be great to see you next year. So um, personal photo projects. Why this topic? Well, um, this is something I've been thinking about for for a while, and where it stems from is I, I go to the ocean a lot. You know, it's a big part of my photography. I love the ocean, but I think that as I work a subject again and again and again, certainly I get better. But I also can fall into like the comfort zone trap where you know it's okay i can walk up and it's 20 minutes before sunset here's the rocks that's where the sun is great set up bang 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 dial in my settings and go home and it becomes a little rote and sure the sky changes from day to day the water changes from day to day um, but my photography isn't necessarily progressing and so i wanted to try to do something about that and change it but at the same time I still love photographing the ocean. That is why I get out of bed in the morning. It's one of those things that I just can't help but shoot. And so um, the idea of trying to do something a little different than what I normally do and put it together into a project. And so what I'm going after are more minimal black and white photos. I've always liked that style of photography where there is just one or two very strong subjects in the scene. It's black and white, so it's really about the subject, not about the color. And so I'm trying to apply this to seascapes. And well, um, I know I've done some black and white work in the past, but I'm really trying to do something, uh, you know, a little different, you know, longer exposures is part of it. Well, let me show you some of the footage from this outing I made um, to La Jolla, one of my local normal haunts. And uh, well, I, I'll show you what happened. I'm sitting out here on the rocks in La Jolla and it's been a bit of a time walking around uh, looking for some interesting foreground rocks, something that's a bit of a minimal composition, paying attention to the water. Uh, I'm going to continue with my, my project here. Minimal uh, compositions, longer exposures, really making the scene simplistic, uh, trying to, <laughs> I don't want to say bring order to chaos. It's not really that chaotic out here. It's not like a, a forest or, or something where there's just things everywhere. But breaking it down to its bare essentials. Maybe if I were a musician, I'd be looking to get down to basic piano chords and uh, just, you know, a, a drum track or something like that. Maybe not even the drums. Of the places I've studied so far, uh, there's one where the water's coming up uh, pretty good right now. The tide's still rising a little bit, but there's, there's not a lot of wave action. I think I'm going to start there. I really don't have to wait too much longer, even though the sun's still pretty high in the sky. Maybe about 30, 35 minutes before sunset, although looking at it, the marine layer, it's going to swallow up the bright sunlight. But I don't really care about that. I'm not after a, a sunset. I'm after shape and form. So I'm going to go set up over there, get started, and uh, then move to a second location if light and time permits. See how I'm framed up here, or at least kind of. Got some glare going on there. More or less like this. And what I'm finding is I need to keep some of the beach in the foreground. Otherwise, what ends up happening is with a longer exposure, everything in the foreground gets a little bit smoky and it just looks like you know rocks floating in fog and it could be anything. If there wasn't the horizon out there, we wouldn't necessarily know what we're looking at. So uh, I need to uh, change up my positioning a little bit and time my shots a little better to work with the ocean. All right, well, sun's, sun's disappeared. There's still some ambient light though. And uh, the tides have changed quite a bit. So I'm gonna head over the other side of the rocks that are behind me and uh, grab a few more before I lose the light entirely. Now, this is gonna be the final sequences for the evening. Uh, I'm gonna tweak this composition a little bit, but this is fundamentally what we'll have here, these foreground rocks. And I'm offset from the water far enough that even though I've got some, I've got a nice smooth sand in the foreground there, but uh, for the next you know, 10 to 15 minutes, I won't have to worry about the tripod being affected. Focus on this foreground rock here, dial in. Uh, F11 feels pretty good. There's not that much depth in the scene. And uh, I wanna try to get something in the neighborhood of like six to eight seconds was feeling pretty good on the other side there. Enough mist in between these rocks, but I won't lose some of the rock features to the larger white wash that goes over the top of them. So by the end of this outing, I'd realized a couple of things. Uh, number one, I need to be a little farther away 
from the waterline and use a longer lens to reach in. And if I'm doing these longer exposures, it's purely because sand moves. Even uh, with the sturdy tripod, tripod spikes, just you know, the bit of wash coming around the tripod legs, a little bit of sand's gonna move, the tripod is going to wiggle. And that little bit of wiggle will ruin you know, a, a four minute exposure, heck, even a 30 second exposure. Uh, the other thing I realized is uh, I got a lot of work to do in figuring out and you know, re re recalibrating my photographic eye to find um, at least things that I have in my mind's eye. I got a few photos from the outing yeah, I'm not uh, unhappy with them, but I'm not thrilled with them. It's not quite what I was hoping to get. And so got a lot of work to do. I think some of that's in the field work. I think some of that's still on the processing side too, um, you know, trying to find my way with getting this type of minimal yet strong, powerful look from a black and white photo. And um, well, at the end of it, it's really, it's rejuvenated my, my photography. It's, it's giving me... Um, a second thing to go when I go out to the ocean. Of course, if there's a beautiful sunset, I'm going to photograph it, but I'm also looking for these other things. And I think that's the whole point kind of wrapped up in the tip of the week is, you know, do you need a personal photo project? And I think of course the answer depends on where you are in your photo journey and you know, whether or not you need something to kind of get you out of a rut. Uh, I think there's a very, very good value in it for building up a body of work around kind of a theme. And um, also to help, you know, get over a, uh, a hurdle or out of a valley or however you'd like to describe it when you're in your photography and you kind of feel like you're repeating the same thing. And um, something that helped me at least is, you know, I always see these other photo projects from uh, other artists and it always seems to be... Um, a very you know, like a, a heavier or a weightier thing, and maybe that's because I've been watching folks that do uh, things with people. Like you know, it's you know photographs of you know like forty powerful women across the planet, or um, you know documenting uh, a, a tragedy somewhere in the world or something like that. And you know they're they're very heavy emotional things. Uh, it, for a personal project, it doesn't need to be that. Uh, it can be something that just means something to you. And for me, uh, it's going to be the ocean and it's going to be a uh, minimal style of black and white. And that's like the genre that I've chosen. So um, maybe that'll help you out. You know, you don't have to think in grand terms to have a photo project. It's more about, you know, for me at least, it's more about moving my photography ball forward on the field and not falling into the comfort zone. Well, that'll do it for this week in the field. Hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about personal photo projects in the comments uh, or shoot me an email if you want to contact me directly. As always, you're welcome to send in your photo questions. Love to hear from you and what's on your mind photographically. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Happy shooting. <laughs>